Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Now, today, I don't care about people like I care about God, I tell you that. But people are in the midst of the equation, so, you know, that's one of those things. But God is absolutely the most important of all, of anything. Without him, my God, Jesus said, without me, you can't even do anything. Nothing at all. Well, let's lift our hands to him. It's, it's uh, the connection with God that makes anything possible. You know, the funny thing is, even people in the world that do great things, they tapped into a realm of creativity. They can call it whatever they want. But God created from the beginning all of these things of the brilliance that can come into a person. So they focused enough to tap into that thing, which could actually be their God, so to speak. But they, many people don't know that the origin of all of it was God. Yes? In the beginning was the Word, the Word, the spoken plan of Jehovah in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with us, and the Word was even God himself. So the plan of anything good anything at all came from him. So when we sing a song to him, like telling him he's beautiful, he's wonderful, let's just take a minute and lift our hands and do that. My God, I mean, it's, then, I mean, that's like elementary. We should do that. The only way you're going to feel good for eternity, let me say this right now, in life you can have some things that can make you feel good, like an, along the journey. You can make some money, you can have a good vacation, you could have a holiday, you could have some nice things, you could have friends, you could have relationships, right, 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 relationship, relationships, friends, happenings, you know, that produces happiness, but those are all temporal. And they're good, but they're not the ultimate. So... <laughs> So I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel so amazed about this, this revelation, I'll tell you. The, the, the temporal is a good thing, but the eternal is better. So everything in life that's good is also a temporal thing. Imagine. Imagine that. Temporal. But the eternal is better. So God does want you to have good experiences in this life because Job 36, 11 says, if you serve the Lord, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your life will be full, filled with pleasures. Psalm 16, 11 said, at his right hand is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Psalm 35, 27 said, that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Well, I know I'm his servant. How about you? Hit yourselves if you're his servant. Hit yourself somewhere if you're his servant. Hit yourself yeah, somewhere if you're his servant. Touch yourself. Tap yourself on the shoulder. Put your hand on your heart. Hit yourself in the top of your head. Whatever you are, you know, whatever. Let's say, I'm his servant. God takes pleasure in your prosperity. And I found something else out about prosperity, a little bit deep now, that it's for the purpose of God to be fulfilled. Prosperity is for the purpose of God to be fulfilled. It's not just to feel like, you know, you got stuff to be flashy about or whatever, okay? Like, like I was saying, in the realm of the now, happiness is based on happenings. That's a saying of mine. Happiness is based on happenings. Good ones, you feel happy. Bad happenings, you feel, you know, perplexed. And, and sometimes people need a, you know, like a spiritual laxative, if I can use the terminology, if that's not too graphic, to get rid of some things that are in your way. Number one is wrong people, all right? But God is, 
God is amazing. You know something, when the wrong people leave your life, whether voluntarily or by force, good things begin to happen. Peace comes. You know, you, you have to judge. Listen to me, I'm going to help you now. Are you, ready for, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? You want to learn something here? You got to judge every person and experience based on how they make you feel good or bad. If you feel bad and tension, come on, y'all Y'all are like sitting there looking. Lift your hands and get happy and get free a bit, you know, like get, get a little bit excited. It's okay. Smile a little bit. It won't hurt you. Hmm? How things make you feel. Somebody said, and I like this, that a man only marries a woman because of the way she makes him feel. Not by how she looks, that's not enough, it's good. Not by, you know, what she's good at, okay, that's, that's okay. You know, what the purpose is or whatever. But how do you feel in someone's presence? I, I'm gonna drop a real bombshell right here. How do you, someone just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. How do you feel in God's presence? Can you ever feel bad? This is deep already. I've just shared in four minutes more than some men say in a lifetime. Have I not? Lift your hands and get excited. Have I not? I've, I've just said like in four or five minutes just now what some people haven't said in a lifetime. You haven't heard that kind of revelation anywhere. I'm not trying to be funny or cheeky or cute or, you know, aggrandize myself. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a messenger. It's God's brilliance coming through me. But, the, you know, this is what I'm talking about, the level of... How much do we have of God? But can you ever feel bad? My brother, my sister, can you ever feel bad in his presence? Yeah. It's not possible. Can you feel bad in the presence of somebody? Oh, my. Ha, ha, ha. Too recent to, to talk about. Too painful to mention. People are crazy. And I'm talking about saved people. Hello, lift your hands. Saved people? They're genuinely saved. I mean, they've accepted Jesus as their Savior, but I don't know what the mixture is in them. You know, the Bible talked about there's a scripture, there's a mixture, you know. I remember I was preaching in Montreal, Quebec years ago, many years ago. This is a long time ago. And we had a, such a great visitation of God, a revival there. I'll tell you when it was. It was 1997. Is that a few minutes ago? 1997, oh yeah. And the Lord fell so powerfully and uh, well, there was this religious pastor, you know, religious guy. And he had a bunch of people with him. Came to the meeting, looked okay on the outside, but when the glory fell, he started to manifest, you know. He started to manifest, was mad, was looking, like growling. I, mean, I thought, my God, in the house of God, lift your hands. In the revival meeting, it had, yeah. And he got, he went, he was crazy. You could tell the guy was crazy. He was, and I was like, and there was some other things going on. There were people trying to, you know, speak against the, the revival, you know, and come against it and all that, you know. And, and I had to have a little committee meeting with a pig farmer. That's pretty, that's pretty pathetic. A guy that was a pig farmer, he hosted that meeting. And, uh, you know, they called me like the Sanhedrin to go and talk, you know, and, you know, answer some questions. And I just shared a few things, and then they were all quiet. The Holy Ghost just shut them up. They, you know, like, they didn't even know what they called the meeting for after the, Lord after the Lord fell in the place. And I just left laughing, smiling, happy, went back to the main city. But this guy actually was a pig farmer. He owned a pig farm. And they took me there. I was so curious. Oh, God help me in my curiosity. Curiosity. It's curiosity that killed the cat, right? That's why a cat has nine lives in the, you know, it's a fairy tale, right? A cat has meow, nine lives, right? Nine times because he, he's so curious, he kills himself, you know? He sees the electric plug and he sticks his little paw in there. Psh, ah, meow. One life, gone. Raise him up. Round two, let's go. What's he going to do now? Gets too close to the edge of a building, you know. Whoo, he slips and falls. I had that experience. I had a cat. I had a cat. His name was, uh, this is really funny. 
I feel the anointing so strong. Oh my God, lift your hands. This is great. I'm having fun already. I had a cat. His name, you know what his name was? You know what his name was? You're not going to believe it. His name was Monkey 2. Because he was the boy, the brother, and his sister was Monkey 1. How do you name cats Monkey? I don't know. I was thinking about monkeys, and I said Monkey one day, and there were the kittens were there, and then the people that had just named them Monkey, and they said, well, this is Monkey 1. I said, well, what are you going to name the other one? Okay, let's name him Monkey 2. And then guess what? Another one came. He was Monkey 3. I'm telling you a true story. This is a true story. This happened in Africa. This wasn't in no America or anywhere in Europe. This was in right here on the African soil. And then we had Monkey 3, and then Monkey 4, and Monkey 5, and that was the end of it. Monkey 5 was in Europe. A white cat, and he ran away, and uh, somebody named the monkey over there, and the Monkey 5. I said, let's call him Monkey 5. Maybe there was a Monkey 6. I don't know. Monkey 5 was so beautiful, white, you know, beautiful fur, big uh, colored eyes, and he, but he ran away, got lost. So sad story. Uh, the end, the end of Monkey 1 and Monkey 2 was very bad. I don't know if I want to tell that story. It used to make me cry when I tell the story. Now I I'm, I'm feel real happy, so I know it wouldn't make me cry. But it's, it's, it's bad. It's a bad. It's... But anyway, but let me tell you one part. Let me tell you the one I wanted to tell you. So Monkey 2 got out by the balcony on the fifth floor. Hello? Fourth floor, fifth floor, uh, way up there. And got to the edge, and then next thing you know, we were looking for monkey two, and monkey two was nowhere. Monkey one was there. Monkey one looked very curious. The skinny one, he the skinny sister. Uh, it was a skinny one, you know. And monkey two was a bit fat, you know. The boy, he was big, and he wasn't there. We thought, where did he go? People looked everywhere, and somebody even went outside, going, monkey, monkey, monkey. People must have thought they were crazy if they heard, calling the cat, monkey. Monkey, where are you? Where are you, monkey? He wouldn't answer. So two days later, they found, somebody found him. He was hiding under a bush, and he was shaking like this, and he was just messed up. Now, that cat was crazy anyway, okay? That cat was already crazy. Monkey one was, was feisty, would jump and scratch you, and you know? You know those cats, you know, you got to watch out. You play, like, a game with them, and they get you. Next thing you know, you got gashes on your arm everywhere in your hands. You know, they scratch you, you know. Ooh, used to do this thing like you go, hey, like this, right? And they go, one, two, three, they look, you know, they, you know, cats are crazy. They look and then they go, whew, and they get you. So, got hit a couple of times, anyway. So, uh, found this cat and he was hiding and shaking and looked really messed up. Oh, I felt so bad. I really did cry. I felt so bad. And then somebody was, a guy had him and he was carrying him, holding him, and I saw the cat and he was breathing heavy, like he's, <sighs> like that, and he was shaking. And they said, ah, oh, he's okay, don't worry. And I said, no, he's not. The Lord told me, bring that cat to the vet right now. And we brought the cat to the vet. They said, this cat here would not have lived through the night. He wouldn't have lived through the night. In the morning, he'd be dead. And so they put him in the cage. And he was so crazy, screaming, crying. He put his hands through the little fence, you know? You know the little square things in the fence in the veterinarian place? You know what I'm saying? He put his hands through there trying to get out. When he came out, he had no hair on his arms. Somebody lift your hands, praise the Lord. All the hair on his arms was gone. He had bald arms from reaching out for two days in the place because they had to shoot him up with antibiotics. And they said his kidneys were shut off and he was... He was traumatized and f poisoned, didn't eat all that. He uh, ate something, was poisoned. They said he had poison, he was poisoned. That cat was gonna die. So the cat lived, and then it had a very funny story at the end. Uh, somebody brought them up country and a poisonous snake, you know, those mambas or something, got them, got the sister. And the sister, I don't wanna tell the story, it's a bad. Ah, anyway, lift your hands, praise the Lord. I don't wanna tell the bad one. So then he died too, anyway, and then that was the end of Monkey 1 and Monkey 2. Then another cat came along, cute little cat. He was looking for a place, and I opened the door, and he ran in. He just ran right in, just went run, ran right into the house. And I thought, oh, and he was hiding under the table, and he was like hiding back there. I said, somebody get that cat. So I said, a guy, get it. They reached in there, and the cat was so scared. Get him, pull him out. Then I looked at him. He's so cute. Oh, my God, he's so beautiful. 
I said, ah, he's, he's out there, he's in the mess. You just let him be rescued to stay in here. Praise the Lord. Am I a cat rescuer? No. L lift your hands. Come on. Rescuing people, that's where it's at. But we, you know, God loves his creation too. Amen. But people are, there's nothing more, more important than people. At the end of the day, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his own, one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have e eternal life, everlasting life. So the only thing that's the most important of anything in this world, this life, is your soul. Where it ends up. Praise the Lord. So the second life of the cat I was talking about. Nine lives of a cat right now. I shouldn't be preaching on this. But anyway, let me move, let me move ahead. So he fell off the balcony but survived like 50 feet down, you know? Cats, nine lives. But humans only have one life, right? Unless James Bond, you know the movie You Only Live Twice. Remember that one? Nice song. I can think, remember the song. You only live twice. James Bond. But us, we only live once. The Bible said it's a, you know, somebody was asking me this the other day. They're Catholic, you know. Maybe they believe, or they don't really believe in the Pope. They don't really believe. They, I mean, they're, you know, the parents are in it, you know, and then they grow up in it, you know. And then they think, they, 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 they seem to keep thinking because God is loving that he's going to let everyone out of hell one day. And they're trying to argue with me about it. I said, find it in the Bible. It's not there. Once you die, and then the judgment. So we have to be right on this side of the fence to cross over the gate to the great promised land, which is eternity with the Lord. Lift your hands. I tell you, the most important thing is God. Without God, you can't survive. Once you know him, now, please, someone says, well, people in the world, they live and survive. So can I? I guess so, because God causes his Rain to fall on the just and the unjust, but not because he's blessing the wicked, but because he's causing the just to live. And because the unjust are also in the earth, they get to, to have that mercy too to survive because they're here. But the only hope in God's mind, the only hope should be in our mind that they all get saved. Lift your hands. I'm praying for my family members right now. I could call them by name. Let me not say them uh, aloud, but I say them under my breath here. I'm thinking about the names of all of my relatives. And some of them, the Lord's starting to convict them. Like they're following me on Facebook and all that. They're hearing my messages, you know. Their relative is a prophet, a preacher to the nations. You know, they, they're hearing this. They don't know. Because no one in our family were, were, was saved at all. There's no born-again people in my bloodlines. Imagine that. I'm the only one. Except, and, that, and then the ones I led to the Lord, like my dad and my mom, they're in heaven. My grandparents, they're in heaven. My little niece, I laid hands on her, prophesied over her when she's six years old. Now she's, uh, she's a, a, a major lawyer, and she married an NHL hockey star, you know, the, the, the hockey, you know, the professional uh, sports athletes, you know, but playing the hockey from Canada. And they're, they're up there, and then my brother, and then my sisters, and come on now, lift your hands. And my, my aunts, some of my aunts and uncles and stuff like that, and because I'm praying for them, to get saved. If I have to call one on the phone, Lord, please let me do it. Please remind me. Please convict me. Please don't leave me alone. If, if, if I'm the one to talk to someone, but if there's someone, sometimes it's not you, there's somebody else that's going to bring them in. We need to pray for the harvest. Remember the Lord said, pray for the, pray for the laborers. Amen. Because the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Let's lift our hands and pray right now. We command that everyone, some of you are so quiet and so, so I don't know what it is. Are you, are you okay? All right, so, so we need to pray for these, we need to pray for these people. I had some other things I was going to talk about, and just before I, just before I came into the building here, just, I mean, like a minute before I was literally getting out of the car, coming out, and just about to, the Lord spoke to me right then and said, talk about my love, talk about my love, talk about the love of God, talk about love, what it does, what it does. You know, love can conquer anything. It conquers fear, it covers sin, it, cu it kills sin, it kills iniquity, it kills the devil, it kills you. You know, and the, I mean, the bad part of you, the love of God will help you to 
you know, overlook so many things and to look with the eyes of love toward people. Lift your hands. And people that are not very lovable, they don't act very lovable. But still the love of God can win. You know, the scripture says, don't be like eye to eye with an enemy. Don't be like them. Don't answer a fool lest you become like him. And then when you reprove somebody that's like a, a scorner or they're messed up, I've had this experience again recently. Someone that can ask you a question like they want help and they ask you an honest question and you give them an honest answer and they don't, they don't want to take it. They come back at you. These are vipers. They're even in the house of God. Lift your hands. I'm telling you, I don't see any here today. Thank God. I think we've been delivered. But there are people... There are people that are just jacked up, if I can say it. And some people, you don't need to tolerate them. You need to cast them <coughs> like stones, like devils. When you cast the devil out, the flesh that's tied with it also flies through the air and goes. Now, someone can say, well, is that contrary to what you were just saying? Well, no, the principles work together because you have to have, you have, to have peace in your life. But when the love of God fills you, when the presence of God is filling you, you're free. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, my. Freedom. Freedom, freedom. Think of that song. Oh, yes. Freedom. Liberty, liberation. From what? From evildoers, from evil ways, from evil things, from evil people, from evil demons and horrific atmospheres. And I'm just throwing these out now. You've got to catch these as I'm, as I'm throwing them, okay, as they're coming by the Holy Ghost. It's a little bit spontaneous here. I have some notes, but I'm flowing here. Let me say this. When somebody has a contentious way about them, you can't hang with them. Remember Solomon said... Uh, Solomon said what? He says, better to make my bed on the rooftop in the rain than to live down in the palace with a contentious woman. Contentious people are evil people. I'm telling you. Now, we pray they get delivered, all right? But this is the thing you need to gauge your relationships by. Is this good already? I'm talking, I'm saying so many things here. Your relationships by how you feel in someone's presence. You know, have you ever felt like terror inside of you, like fear, like dis dishonor, you know, disorder, like tension, all this stuff going on inside of you because of somebody? Have you ever felt that? You better say something in Africa. You ain't been, a, you ain't lived in Africa for five minutes if you haven't had that experience. I don't know where they are. I don't want to debate that argument. I think, well, uh, well man of God, are they in your spirit? Uh, no, if Jesus is in there, they shouldn't be there. Because Jesus, Jesus ain't having it. Praise the Lord. Jesus, not, Jesus is not having it, right? So he has his own space, but are they in the soul? Are they in someone or on someone? Does it really matter? They're there, they're there. And then people that are so messed up, I don't know what happened to people. I don't know but what happened to people. But i got to say this before I say that. The love of God will conquer all. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Are you, like, you know like the guy that had the ball in the chain around his and he had to walk like this way funny because he's pulling, pulling weight behind him? Are you my luggage today? Do I have to get bent out of shape carrying? Come on, lift it and lift it. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody, go ahead. Other people with their problems, you know. I want to say something. This double-mindedness, like one day it's this, the next day it's that. You know how many times I've seen that in the last few days? By the way, let me give a, a, a little hint out. There are some people that have been in the midst of us that are very crazy, okay? They're not okay. And guess what? I said, guess what? They're gone. Because the prophet is brilliant. We're not having it. Not having it. You get me? I had this preacher friend in America. He's doing a conference right now. He says, are you with me? Are you with me? I said, man, you're saying that. It's a new thing now. I didn't, didn't remember you saying that so many times. 
he say something, and then, are you with me? I'm like, yeah, we're with you. Okay, 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 we're here. Listening. Are you with me? Are you with me? You know? Woo! But is the devil with us? No. Tell the devil, are you with me? No! Get out of here! <laughs> Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you on the way out. You know, the door can like swing both ways and if you don't get through the door quick enough, it could kind of hit you. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you on the way out. Hit the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. Hit the road, Jill. Go walk around with goats somewhere else. Meh, meh. So I have this meme on my Facebook page, it's really funny. This goat, he like runs from far and he runs all the way up to the camera and then smiles and makes a face. And then someone put like a meme flash, like video, hi, like the goat is saying hi. He ran from all the way back there. Hi, right in the camera. <laughs> Somebody caught that on film. And when he got to the camera and he made a face, they wrote a little thing, hi, like he's saying hi, and he made a little noise, you know. Shoot, those things are funny. But when you, go, when you go into the animal park in Africa, oh my God, you see the big game animals. Then when you see goats and cows, it's like, ha, they're like dogs and cats, you know, in America. Everybody's walking their dog, you know, walking their dog outside. I wouldn't do that for five minutes. Bless God. I wouldn't even pay somebody to do that. You know what I mean? Leave those things outside. By the way, the door is closed on the pets thing. I have my pet stories. I'm done. Praise the Lord. Someone say he's done. I'm done. I don't have time for that. You know, could you imagine just to see like an animal and you like see it and you could pet it, you know, the fur on the cat or the dog and, and then the rest of the time, 98% of the time, they're stinking up the house, they're scratching everything. You know, cats will scratch the furniture. You ever see them do that? You ever see cats, that they want to trim their, their nails a little bit, you know? <laughs> and they'll go like this and the next thing you know, you look at your couch, how do you call it here, coach? Look at your coach, and the coach is like toast, you know? Done, finished, amen. Got all holes in it everywhere because of the cat. And then dogs, they smell so bad. And people like let them come lay in their bed with them. You must be sick in your head. I think you need deliverance somewhere. I'll pray to devil, cast that thing out in Jesus' name. The house is meant to be clean, in my mind, okay? This is the way I think. <sighs> clean pristine, smelling good, everything arranged, everything beautiful, not with these animals. Anyway, how'd I get on that? Praise the Lord. But, but when you go into the game park and you start seeing like zebras and rhinoceroses and hippopotamuses and baboons and giraffes and what else, lions and cheetahs and huh, antelopes and gazelles and impalas and kudus and elands and those little funny little antelopes that run around and those guinea fowl birds with the beautiful colors. I have such beautiful pictures. Somebody please remind me to put those on Facebook. I want to uh, uh, put, a, put a post up with the animals. I did a little bit before, but I have to do it again. And the zebras, oh my God. So after you see them, you see a few little animals. You're like, ah, outside. But that's all here in this beautiful place. How could people live in such a beautiful place and be so messed up? I don't know, but the devil, the devil's around somewhere. But is he with us? Someone say no, write down these words somewhere. Write it down on your hand, very African, but then you know, by tomorrow you'll have to do it again because when you wash your hands, the ink will melt off, you know? Just write no, N-O, exclamation point. <laughs> no to the devil. And then on the other hand, somewhere, or like right above it, right now, and then above it, do yes. I found a way to do this on a picture. It said, the devil's name, he does this, this, and this, and this. So you know what I did? I said, I know how to do that. Let me hit the edit pen thing and the phone thing, the filter thing, yeah? So I wrote in red, loser, loser, over his name. You can see his name if you look really close, but it says, loser, does this. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said praise the Lord. Amen. 
You got to make up your mind you're going to have peace and you're going to live in the love of God and the presence of God. It's the most important thing. Now, let me go a little bit further. For that, John 3.16 talks about the love of God giving Jesus for us that we could be saved for eternity. Isn't it wonderful? And again, in 1 John 4, 9 to 11, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son. I like that translation, one and only. That's really great. The one and only. Into the world. He sent his one and only into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God. Of course, we didn't know how to love him first, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4, 9 to 11. So John 3, 16. 1 John 4, 9 to 11. Some other scriptures I quoted were the pleasure scriptures, Job 36, 11. Psalm 35, 27. And... Uh, Psalm 1611, okay? Now, please just make a note of those. Somebody could write them on the screen if you want, and please do that. <sighs> Psalm 3527, let it appear. Great to read it. Uh, Psalm 1611, let it appear. Read it. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the children go to heaven. Okay. Enough time to read that. Next one. Job 3611. If you serve the Lord, and especially if you do it well with all your passion and heart and life and mind and soul and strength and resources and time and energy and commitment, hello, good preaching. He said, I will let you spend your days in prosperity. Oh, my God. How is it tied with money and blessing? Of course it is. You can't get away from it if you're in the Bible. So anybody that uh, doesn't think prosperity is good is pretty idiotic. Uh, the devil crept in there somewhere because uh, God didn't give anybody that kind of thinking. No. And then thir Psalm 35, 27, his servant shall experience prosperity. And God said, I take pleasure. Now, that's my pleasure, the Lord said. My pleasure now, <laughs> my pleasure is now for you to prosper. And when I see it happening, I get excited. Oh, God is good. I found these pictures of stacks of cash, and people really click on that. Like, we get a lot of likes on those posts, you know because everybody wants it. But that's God's will for you to have a lot of that. Abundance of it. Too much. Jesus had too much. Let me tell you something about Jesus. He was too much, and he had too much. He had a thief in the treasury. Now, if they didn't have a lot of stuff, uh, they would have missed it. But he never missed it. Never blinked. Never talked about money. Never thought about it. He had rich women in Luke 8.3. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. Let's look, let's look at that scripture. This is great. At Joanna and Susanna were their names. Two of them. There were many others, I'm, uh, of course, and I'm sure, but even though the Bible doesn't list so many names, but just as an, as an example to us, an example, he wrote the two names, Joanna and Susanna, who ministered to Jesus of their substance because they had. They had a lot. One was the wife of Herod, who, who was some big guy in the and, and entities down there. And then she had a lot of money. They had a lot of treasury. Her husband was very rich. And she was taking that money. Man, I've seen this happen. Women that take money that's around and they bring it to the man of God. Oh, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad when it's me. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. I'm clapping. I'm clapping for that. I've had it happen a lot of times. Women, you know? And they want to give you, like, something good. They say, hey. You know, thank God for women. Oh, my God. Where would we be without women? But where would women be without men? You wouldn't be here. Ding, dong, hello. Ring the bell. Ding, a ling, a ling, a ling. If it wasn't for men, you wouldn't be here, ladies. But ladies are great. God knew what to make. 
He knew how to make them. He knew about the help meet thing and the help and the, you know, all of it, all the good stuff. He knew how to make a woman to help mankind, help men. What does the Bible say? In Genesis 2.18, it says, uh, God saw that Adam was alone and it wasn't good for him to be alone, so he made a, a help meet for him. A completer, not a competer. Again, I want to touch on this bone of this contention again. Contentious people, you cannot trust them. Oh, my. Someone could tell you one thing one day, and they got that contention demon in their life. The next day, they turn it into something else. The, and the unthinkable, absolutely shocking, the unthinkable they can do. I, and come up with in their crazy heads, what kind of demon is this? What kind of devil? What kind of... And these are people that are in church, too, as well as in the world. Sad to say. Can't trust such a person. Can't. Unstable, unreliable, crazy. And, and some of these people, you think they're your friend. Oh, my God. No way. So please look at everything. I'm really helping somebody. This is very prophetic for certain people right now. Lift your hands. Somebody, let's pray. You in the TV land, internet land, <laughs> your house, your car, your phone, your laptop, I don't know, your tab, your phone, your, probably your phone. You're watching me right now. This is very prophetic for some people. I tell, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking. I know what I'm doing here. The Lord is speaking about looking at how you feel in the presence of someone. What kind of agitation do they bring in your atmosphere? Hello? Are they messing up your environment, messing up your head, causing you stress and pain? And then one day test it out when they're not there. These are people that you interact with. And watch one day when you're not with them. Hey, everything feels great. And they come again, and then, oof, you need to cut ties with such a person. I'm helping you now. This is the prophet talking as well as the pastor and the teacher. I, I, I you know, because you think, well, you know, love would be so gushy, ushy, sloppy, agape, you know, kind, you know, vulnerable, you know, to the point that someone could be victimized. No, God doesn't want you to be victimized. He wants you to be living in a holy, great, glorious, happy beautiful environment in his presence where there is what in psalm 1611 again let's look at it again psalm 1611 in his presence there is fullness of joy and joy gives strength peace gives strength peace kills stress god i feel the anointing peace kills stress it kills it kills it flat dead Stress dissipates and disappears. It gets denied by the spirit of peace. Weakness and sadness and tension and, you know, discon being disconcerted, you know? The concert, the notes are all clashing. Things aren't flowing right. You, know, you just, with a lack of peace, it's devastating through someone's life. But when you have peace and joy, that's why Jesus said you need to have peace and joy. Then here's another scripture. Let's look at it. Isaiah 55, 10, I think it might be. If I'm, I'm not looking at notes here, but we can find it later and put it up. It says you'll go out with wherever that scripture is in Isaiah. I think it's 55, 10. It could be I, I, 9 or 10. I think I'm right. But let, let's look. Uh, it's just saying there from my mind. Let, let, let's look it up and find it later. But uh, you'll, you'll go out with... Peace and be led forth with joy, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Remember that song? You shall go out with peace and be led forth with joy, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Yeah, you know what that means, the trees of the field clapping their hands? Someone said, is that like a cartoon? No. It's talking about creation celebrating the presence of God. Lift your hands. It's the, it's the creation on the earth, including you and me, being, you know, the, the creation celebrates the presence of God. 
My God, this is good teaching. The, the, the presence of God causes everything to be favorable. Remember the scripture says, I'll open doors that no man can shut. Remember the scripture says, uh, 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 Balaam found out, that crazy Balaam, that he couldn't curse who God had already blessed. It said that, there's another scripture that says that this enchantment of witchcraft and occultism and wickedness and all that, it can't have any effect against the righteous. You know there's a scripture like that? Because, because, because why? Because why? Because the presence of God destroys all that. I was preaching in Savo, Kenya, Savo West. Beautiful animals there, but I did it a couple of times. I think I'm done. I want to go to some other places. I don't want to keep going to the same place. Uh, once is good, twice is enough. Praise the Lord, thrice is too many. All right? Unless there's something really, really good going on there. We'll see later, but not right now. I don't feel. But uh, we saw some beautiful animals there. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, this prophet is from America, a very powerful woman of God. She had a vision. <laughs> she said, she said, she said, uh, there's people out there in that land, you know. Is that Saukombani land, is it? No, it's further out. But there's it's a lot of combas, a lot of, you know, what do they call that? I, I don't know his names for it. And they said there's a lot of people, they do witchcraft there and all that stuff. You know, a lot of people do that kind of stuff over there. You know what I mean? So, but she said, Prophet, I saw you going there, and I had such joy, I started to laugh. I saw the presence of God around you like fire. It was tall and wide and fat, before and behind and around and above, all the way to your feet and past on the, on the ground. And when you walk, she had this open vision. This is amazing. I feel the anointing when I'm talking about it. I feel God. That was a really a vision of, uh, from God. So there's fire, fire all around you. And the enemy's there, like in the, you know, some in the midst of the crowd, the people. He said, but they're just there. They're just neutralized and bound. Nothing can touch you. And, and I, I remember that word. And then when I went to preach there, I went to preach there two days. I stayed in the animal park. Beautiful place where uh, the room we had, they just opened the balcony, the doors, and walk out. And for 100 miles, as far as your eye can see, all you see is mountains and animals. And they're wild animals, very dangerous animals. I mean, real wild animals, not these, you know, not cats and dogs and goats, you know? <laughs> Cows. A cow is like, a cow can't hurt you, unless the ones in Pamplona, Spain. You know, when they do the running of the bulls, and the bulls run, they got the horns, and they run, and they know how to hit people, and they can hurt you. But they do it on purpose, you know. They're, they're mad, man. They're, things have been abused, and when they let them out and let them run in the streets, and the people, they'll hit, and they'll go after every human they can and try to, Gore them, maim them, trample them, stomp them, kick them, throw them through the air. We've all seen the videos of that. The run, it's called the running of the bulls in Spain, Pamplona, P-A-M-P-L-O-M-A -P -O -O or N-A, Pamplona, Pamplona, Pam Pamplona, Spain. Every year they have this thing. And the people come in the crowds and then they let the bulls run down the narrow streets and they try to get out of the way. It's pretty insane. There's another festival in Italy where they throw tomatoes at each other once a year. They let them ripen tomatoes, like millions of them, and they have tomato fights. And they throw them hard at everybody, and everybody's full of dripping tomatoes everywhere. Some of them get hurt because the people throw them. They don't care. There's like thousands of people, and you grab as many hundreds as you can and throw them. I didn't plan to say any of this. This is the Holy Ghost. Are you getting blessed? This is great. Lift your hands and praise the Lord for this. This is powerful. I didn't have any of this in my mind or my notes. This is the Holy Ghost talking here. Thank God for the anointing, I'm telling you. The tomato festival. Whew! Tomato throwers. I had a maid one time in, in the, from the Philippines, and we had, I had a lot of workers from the Philippines. Uh, uh, those people from the Philippines are very diligent. The men and the women, they're very respectful. They work hard, and they're small people, you know? They're not big. I think one, one of the persons working for me was like four foot nine, 100 pounds. No, 95, ni less than 100, 95 pounds. In kilos, maybe that's like what, 30 kilos? Is that, or less? But powerful, could outwork men, could outwork other people. I've never saw anybody, anything like it in my life. 
And uh, so we had a revival. A revival broke out, and the pastor, we rented this house, and he had such a poverty mindset. He couldn't believe that we chose the rich area. And I said, God has taken residence here. This is an extended revival. I need a good house. So I'm going to bring everything here and facilitate this for a while that we can live here. Let's just believe God. He couldn't believe it. This place was called uh, Cypress something. It was a yacht club with a lake, and only the millionaires lived there in the area, like a lot of poverty down there in the south in North Carolina, this little two light town in the middle of North Carolina. So I thought, we need our staff from New York, bring them down, other people. So I sent people up there with vehicles to get things and bring them down. And, th and this, this uh, we ha I'm having a meeting, I'm sitting at the table, the dining table, having coffee with the host pastor of the revival and some other leaders, yeah? Uh, not a lot of people, just about three or four of us, four of us maybe. And we're like laughing, you know, telling things. And then they were talking about people's giftedness. And so I, I yelled out, I took a sip of coffee and I yelled out, yeah, I'm really gifted at some things. Not everything. There's a lot of things I'm not interested in doing, but if I put my mind to it, I'm sure I could. And uh, the maid is standing over on the side looking, grinning, you know, and she couldn't resist, yeah? Praise the Lord for boldness. Because, you know, the, 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 how, the servant's help is not supposed to talk like that, but. I was in Malindi in Kenya, and these people have the best people in the kitchen. They laugh like they lost their minds. I thought, pe pe these stuffy, weird, evil, wicked people, they wouldn't let staff have fun in their house. You know, the workers, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and they were laughing, and they were telling jokes, and then the, 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 the host, the owner of the house would say something, and the people in the kitchen would laugh like fools. I mean, laugh out loud, can't stop falling over. You know, you know when you laugh so hard and you, you fall on top of the counter or you fall on your friend there and they have to hold you up. You know the kind of thing you laugh so hard and you just... <sighs> Someone had the nerve to say, are people having fun here? I said, yeah, I, we have fun all the time. I'm, I'm, a, I'm fun. I'm, I'm, a, I'm better than a barrel of monkeys. Remember the old joke? A barrel of monkeys is funny. I'm better than that. Praise the Lord. Fun. You lying, stinking devil. Don't talk like that. Hush up in Jesus' name. Yamaza. In Jesus' name, Swahili. How do you say in Jesus' name? Huh? Okay, you said it. I'll, you, somebody write me that. Write me a WhatsApp. Please, you, you write me a WhatsApp? Write me a WhatsApp, what it is. Somebody. In the name of Jesus, Yamaza. Happy. What do you know about happy? Praise the Lord. You're not happy. That's why you talk like that. You know, people that are, let me say something else. People that are full of wickedness, they want to accuse the other person of being full of wickedness. You ever notice that? Even in America. You ever notice that? Let me say it again because I don't want you to miss the point. People that are full of wickedness, a certain thing, that's what they see because that's what they're full of. And they accuse somebody else who's not like that like they're like that, when it's really them that are like that. Is that satanic sickness or what? Lift your hands and say, Lord, please deliver me from anything like that. This is good preaching right here. Somebody's getting delivered today. I'm telling you right now. Make some decisions to cancel some friendships and relationships based on how you feel. If someone's disturbing your peace and messing up your flow, and they're all full of that stuff, you have no company with them. Don't. Mark 16, 17, another scripture, put it on the screen, let's look at it. Mark 16, 17, mark those who cause division among you and avoid them. Have no company with them. For these serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly or whatever. They're not really servants of God. They're causing division. That's not, you know what, did I boil it down? Whether it's their belly or, or their crazy head or so, you know, let's not debate over that. Well, whatever that means. Or maybe they just want money, you know, to eat. You know, it could be you know, symbolic of that. But let's leave that part of the verse alone because that speaks for itself. You can figure that. But just the point of mark those that cause division among you for these serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, they're not really serving God correctly at all or at all, like nil, if they're causing division. And strife is really bad because it brings every evil work, the Bible says. Every evil work can come from strife. Unstable. You know, here's another scripture. Let's look at it. James chapter 1. A double-minded man 
is unstable in his ways and even all his ways and will receive nothing from the Lord. God ain't given nothing in that equation. Strife is evil and God steps out when that steps in. So we have to be good gatekeepers. I was thinking about this word gatekeeper. Sometimes you can cry to God. Here's the thing, when it gets so bad, a situation gets so bad, or you're just in the midst of such nonsense, you know what I mean? I'm talking to people here, this is prophetic for, for a lot of people. And you, you say, hey, it's too much. Cry to God and say, God, maybe I wasn't the best gatekeeper myself. Maybe I didn't know. Maybe someone seemed okay, but then they're not okay. Hello? Help me, Lord, to set the boundaries and have gates around my life. Lift your hands and pray that. That's a prophetic prayer. And God will answer that by fire and he'll help you. Because you can't achieve a lot with the wrong people in your midst. It'll age you. It'll stress you. It'll wear and tear you. Oh, my God. And someone could look like, here's a Christian person in the church or in the business or in the office or in the, you know, wherever you are, right? Your company, your relatives, some of your relatives. I, mean, so, I hope it's not a pastor somewhere, but it could be. Praise the Lord. And you're just, you're just all messed up by that. You have to ex excise that, you know? You have to cut it out. You have to surgically remove that from your life. There's no place for that. You know, I've seen this happen. Where people come and they look good, and they're not good at all. Can you imagine that? But guess what? The love of God, I hope, can reach them and help them. I see people of other religions. I see people of other persuasions. I see people in the world that don't know the Lord like we do. I pray that they get saved because it's the only hope. Lift your hands. It's the answer to everything. It's the answer to every evil in this world. I can name so many names of evil. By the way, in Kenya, be vigilant right now because there's some, you know, there's some things brewing in the air. You don't want to be in the wrong place. So be very careful about your movements now the next few days. It's especially tomorrow, some kind of day. I don't know what's up with that. You know, in the midst of any evil, it's the answer to all of it. Because if someone gets saved, that's automatic, or experiences the love of God, that's automatically like a, not the end of maybe, but the beginning of a short-circuiting of that cycle of evil. Somebody said, how can someone vote for a Democrat again if they're a Christian? Lose, you know what, God, you think the devil's moving in the airwaves? God is moving just as strong. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Hello? There are things happening behind the scenes. Celebrities are getting saved. Look at Justin Bieber. Come on. Kanye West and all this. Even Kim Kardashian had to put her clothes back on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because she can't walk around with everything hanging out. Because, that, you know, that's her business. You know what I mean? She made millions. She's rich over that. But now she doesn't know what to do. It's like her career got a little befuddled a bit because... She has to dress and cover everything now, says Kanye, her husband, because Jesus stepped into the picture. And don't be a hater and say, do they really know God? If you ask that question, I want to ask, do you really know God? <laughs> well, who do they think they are doing this? And all of a sudden now, maybe they had problems in their life, and then they're doing this Jesus thing. And Why? Well, you need to do the Jesus thing and hush up, you ugly thing. Yeah? Praise the Lord. Someone says, who do you think you are? Or, who, who do you think you are? Let's throw it right back at you. Right back at you. <laughs> Lock and load. Who are they? Do they really know? Do you really know? You take care of your own soul. And people that criticize preachers and all that, oh my God, what foolishness. Do you even know them? Can you even hold a candle to them? It's, a lot of it's jealousy. You ever hear people talk about Joel, you know, Joel, they don't like Joel, the Joel hate campaign, the Bishop Jake's hate, hate, haters campaign, you know, hating on them. Yeah, maybe they said some things that rubbed you wrong, or maybe they've, yeah, but, they, but you, don't, you, don't, you don't know anything about, like, how they got to where they are. Joel Osteen, dear Jesus, do you know nine million people watch his broadcast every Sunday? 
this is the real viewership. This is not like the numbers that the TV thing says, well, we have a target, a possible audience of this many millions of people, but those people aren't watching. By the way, the TBNs now and the God TVs now and the Daystar and all that, they don't have the viewership they had because of the internet. And thank God, the cable company, I had to pay a cable company because I had the cable box, because that's the thing to do when you have a house. You get the cable, right? I had to cut all that off, and I just had to pay the last bill off, finally, because I still had a, a bill after I cut it off, and they called me. And I thought, let's just sort that and pay that stupid thing. I'll never order it again. Praise God. Wherever I am, the cable box, I don't want it. I can watch what I want on purpose. Praise the Lord. I watch instructional videos, informational videos, worship videos. If you want to watch a good movie, pick a good movie once in a while. One that you want to look at. But you don't need to have all these channels with all this antichrist. Cancel those cable things and figure out how to go direct to the source and pick what you want to look at that'll feed your soul and your spirit and your life. Give you information that you need. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I have my phones going, I have two or three phones and then I'm watching one conference going on one, and then another one pops up and I go, and I think, well, now this guy here on the other phone, is, uh, is this good? I said, is this good? How can I bring you any help if I didn't have any myself? How can I bring you any sanity if I'm not sane myself? How can I bring you any prosperity if I'm not rich myself, and I am? How, how, could, how could I help you if I, if I haven't been helped yet? You know, too many, too many, uh, too many uh, shallow people in the pulpit trying to bring people where they haven't even been themselves. Let's see how it's working for you. So before you want to lift your hand and criticize somebody, have you been where they've been? Do you know what they know? Can you do what they've done? No, the answer is no. So leave them alone. Because you could tickle God the wrong way. You could touch the nerve of God the wrong way, and he could react and send a lightning bolt your way of some, uh, some reaction to your foolishness. Leave them alone. Paul said, mind your own business. So I have one phone going, I'm watching the conference, and it's like, it's good, you know, it's, yeah, God's there. And then all of a sudden, I, this other thing pops up, and there's a guy saying some principles of things he's doing, a, he's speaking, and uh, I'm like, well, let me mute this one for a minute. Thank you for the help. I needed it because I almost lost my thought there. It's very important that I make this point. And I say, what he's saying is more important to feed my mind with right now. So let me pause this other guy for a minute, okay? My friend and all that. But, and, and let me listen to this. And then I'm getting the ideas and I'm writing them down. Powerful. The information that's out there. Have you ever stumbled on some information that was there all along or something that was already done and you didn't know about it? And now you find out about it, and you're like, what? The world is opening up to me. Lift your hands and let's pray and prophesy ahead of ourselves that God will soup. Sometimes you don't know what to look for, but the right thing can look for you. This is the prayer I want to make right now. This is the prayer I want to do for you right now, and for me more. That God will open up that information. We never knew it was there. We didn't know about it, but all of a sudden, we supernaturally find a way to see it, and God has it uh, supernaturally uh, brought to us that we can experience that, and our life will be enhanced to another level, other levels, higher levels. In Jesus' name, so be it. Because there's things that you don't know. That's why you're suffering the things that you're suffering. <laughs> Suffering is unnecessary. Someone thought suffering is like a, a big doctrine from the Bible. Well, suffering's there because of all the idiots in the world. Suffering's there because of the devil. Suffering's there because of persecution and opposition. Yeah. Doesn't mean God ordained all that. Doesn't mean God wants you living a suffering life. You ever hear these people? They got these religious spirits or what? I don't know what they got. Talking about how suffering is, you know, the thing to glory in. And, oh, you're an idiot. You, you, you're signing up. Well, you, if you're praying for that, let's just pray that God answers you by fire. It brings all the suffering you're asking for to your life. I'm asking for none of it. Hello, myself, TM4. I'm asking for none of it. I don't ask for it. Never have I, never, never will I. But I'll ask for the grace, more grace, if any foolishness goes on in our, in our world, that I can be stronger than that and keep passing right on through it. 
But God's not ordained all that. You know, let me talk about martyrdom for a minute. If someone got to be a martyr, your, your reward is great in heaven. So if it could happen, I don't want to say, but if, if it was like permitted by God, you, you get blessed, you get more reward. So what's the downside to that? Not enough. And the crazy people in the world that cause all kinds of, you know, you have to have more grace to pass through that. But God did not ordain a lot of that. That's why these things I'm teaching you here, you need to understand. You need to gauge everything by how you feel. And you override it by the love of God. Let me talk about caring for a minute. People that actually care for you, you care for them for a good reason. It's a very deep thing, and that's where the love of God really is in a situation. Someone said, we don't care how much you know until we know how much you care. But how many know the saying in Nairobi? Me, I don't care. <laughs> you know that Nairobi slang? Me, I don't care. Me, I don't know. Me, I don't care. Uh, praise the Lord. I told this story some time ago about the lady in New York years ago. Oh, she was a fine woman, fine looking woman. But she, she was funny, man. She was in the church just to like to get blessed. She said, I don't care about all this soul winning and all that. I just want to get blessed. I pray that God visited her, you know, since then. This is many years ago. I hope she's okay now, but I laughed so hard. I thought, dear, you're, you're, it's really, you're really funny, but it's really not correct what you're saying. Like, I don't care about winning souls and care about the vision and the world and the kingdom and all that. I just want to get blessed. <laughs> That's what she said. I was like, well, Alicia, I, I thought, can you be any more honest about it? You know, can you be any more, like, can you explain it a little better? Oh, my God. What a statement. But true care is a very deep thing. It makes you, like, unveil the love of God in you more for someone, something, some organization, some work, some function. You just feel more. So the care, the care is deep. You know, God can, like, resonate within you, in you to to do something great, to, to be something great to somebody, you know, to be something great to another person or entity, you know. And the scripture says, let's look at it, Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Just when I'm so busy prophetically and I'm thinking about all these missions we're doing out there in the world, and I wonder, am I a pastor, you know? Then I'm in this anointing right here as the pastor. Is this great? I'm teaching like a good pastor, aren't I? You know, I'm not prophesying over the nation right now. This is going to be, that's going to be. There's a day for that. It's time for that flow. This is a different, this is this, the grace of the pastor. This is Pastor Thomas right here. I, I remember this man of God. He was going to start a church, and he said he got the most warfare over starting a church than anything in his ministry. He's a great evangelist. He's an apostle now. What an apostle. Oh, my, he's got so much going on. You can't even, he's touching the whole world, real apostle. He doesn't call himself an apostle, but, you know, if you think about it, just look at him, you know, you've seen a real apostle right there. Very famous man. I won't say names and places and dates and all that, but, but he said this pastor got on the phone. You know, some of his worst enemies were preachers. A guy that he knew got on the phone and says, well, you're not a pastor. Well, what are you doing? He said, I'm not. He says, as a matter of fact, you're not a prophet either. Can you imagine a preacher would have the audacity to talk to an anointed man of God like it's on the telephone? He said, come to think of it, I wonder if you're an evangelist. And then come to think of it, are you a teacher? And then are you an apostle? He said, no, this guy was so rude, he said all that. So the man of God, my friend, this is what he said. He said, ah, oh, thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. He didn't go, you're a devil from hell. I rebuke you. you what do you mean I'm not? Who the heck are you? Who are you to tell me this? He didn't do that. He took the other road. He said, thank you so much. He said, finally, somebody has confirmed to me what I really am. Nothing. Thank you. I'm so honored. 
He said, yes, I'm nothing, but he's everything. Somebody lift your hands, I feel the presence of God. I have nothing, confirm it. That's right. He said, finally, somebody told it out, just how it is. Thank you so much. I'll never forget it. And for many years, the man brings up that story. He said it many times in his preaching, teaching, messages. Tells the story. Somebody finally confirmed to me I'm nothing. Jesus said, without me, you are nothing, can do nothing, really. So you're nothing much because you can't do anything much or at all. The scripture says, John 15, John chapter 15, wherever that verse is, let's look at it. So it's God that does all these things. How many want more of him? How many want more of his love? Isn't this great that I'm preaching about this? I, I haven't done this much. I haven't done this as much. I will do this some more. I'll continue in this, I'm sure. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one who lets the love flow through us like that. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit, manifestations, pneumaticos, pneuma meaning spirit, tikos meaning manifestations thereof. 1 Corinthians 12, all the gifts of the Spirit. You know, you can read about that. I'm not going to do that right now. You can read that chapter. But go to the 13th chapter of Corinthians. Let's look at this verse. One of the verses there. Uh, I think toward the end, Paul said, when I was like a child, I spoke like a child. But when I became a grown man, I, I, I spoke things of a, grown, uh, of a grown man's mind and heart. But it said, we could have all the gifts and talents and still miss God's will if we don't exhibit love. Love is important. Now that doesn't mean you're, love, you're, love, you're the love arena 24 seven, because some of us have our down sittings and our uprisings, yes? Remember David said, in my down sitting and my uprising, Lord, you know me in all of it. So it doesn't mean that you're like happy-go-lucky, happy, happy, joy, joy, 24-7, 365. But at least it's coming out more and more the love of God. And that comes by the presence of God. Close your eyes and just let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Finally, God is, God is many things, but above all, he is love. Not he has love, he is love. And he's the way, the truth, and the life. He doesn't have the way. He doesn't know the truth alone. But he is the truth, and he is the way, and he is the life. He doesn't just have life, he is life. First John 4, 16. I was wondering what the version is, but I just saw NIV. If you don't like the NIV, read any one you like. My favorite is the New King James, NKJV. That's my favorite. Because it doesn't have this... These and thou fours and whithersoever thou goest. Do we talk like that? Oh, I'll meet you down the road. If you get there, thee thou, therefore, whithersoever thou goest. When was the last time you talked to your friend like that? King Jimmy, King James. By the way, they said he wasn't even saved, but the touch of God came upon him to translate the Bible, the scripture. But was he a Christian? Many people thought not. 1611. So we don't speak old Elizabethan English, the, king, the king's English or the queen's English. We speak in plain terminology. So the King James Version, the new King James, is just straight talk in the English language without the these and the thous and the thou, thy will and thy this. And it says your. Is that how we talk? Lord, your will be done. Lord, thy will be done. Well, are you in church all the time? Or do you speak that language to your friends? You tell your friend, oh, it's okay. Sour. Thy will be done. Do you say that to people? You just say, whatever, do what you want, right? So now if you go modern English translation, like the Message Bible, the Passion Translation, it really brings out the scripture more in the narrative in the English language. Very wonderful. Read those, especially certain passages of scripture, because you'll get more depth. And you have the Amplified, okay, which amplifies. So... Someone said, if it comes across a little loud, it's because it's amplified. Praise the Lord. I'm reading from the amplified version. So if it comes across a little loud, 
it's the app, it's, it's amplified, okay? Praise the Lord, you didn't get that. God is many things, but above all, he's love. So here is the scripture I love. First John 4, 16. Again, find it in the translation you like. There's NIV here. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. We know it and we rely on it. Do you know the Lord is the one he'll never, he'll never betray you? Ah. Is that the best thing ever to know? He'll never backbite you. He'll never shortchange you. He'll never rob you. He will never lie to you. That's 1 John 4.16. And it says in the second part of the verse, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Whoever lives in his love, they're living in him, and he's living in them. Now, what was that verse I was going to go to? Another one. All right, let's look at this one. Oh, that's, a, that's too long. I don't want to read that one. Wow, here it is. Though the Mount, Isaiah 54, 10. Isaiah 54, verse 10. Let's look at it. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor will my covenant of peace be removed from you, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Now, it's not just because he has compassion. See, see we can even look at that in the human, in the human reference to think that, well, uh, people were nice to me and then they weren't nice to me. All right? Hello? People acted friendly like they're friends, and then they turn out to be an enemy after a while. Have you had that happen? Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. And, and you think, well, you still have that little bit. Who has compassion on you? You still think, would he ever change his mind? No, because the part of the scripture right before that in the same verse, <clears throat> Isaiah 54, verse 10, said, my unfailing, it's unfailing love. It will never be shaken. Never. Cannot nor my covenant of peace be removed. It cannot happen. Write down, it cannot be removed, it cannot be shaken. It cannot be removed, it cannot be shaken. Write it down. Cannot, will not, it's unfailing. In other words, can never fail. Not even for a minute in the lifetime, not even for a split second, not even for the twinkling of an eye, not even for a millisecond, not even possible. It's not even possible. So he'll never jack you up. He'll never leave you high and dry. He'll never rip you off. He'll never take advantage of you. Never, ever, 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 ever. Here's another scripture I wanted to go to. And I'm, I'm preaching all this by the Holy Ghost. I have a few notes here, but you notice well, all these scriptures that I'm saying are really not from, many of them are not from, the, from what's on the desk here. But uh, the scripture that says he can't lie. Numbers 23, 19. Write that down. Let's look at it on the screen. I'm saying this from my memory. God is not a man, or he's not anyone, any demon, angel, entity, man, nothing. Nothing in the universe. There's no other created thing that he is that he can lie. He cannot lie. Cannot. That's why we need to take his word so seriously. If you believe the word, you're going to get what the word is producing. God cannot lie. He's not a man that he can lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. <laughs> Woo! I love the scripture again that says, I'll bless you with riches and wealth and treasures, and by this you'll know that I am the Lord your God. That's God's will, to bless you. And he said, that's a sign and a wonder. I was talking about that last week. You need to, everybody needs to watch last week's video. It was success number five in the new year here. Success number five. I'm going to end up taking the 2020 off the title because in 2021 it becomes outdated. Yeah? It's dated. So imagine somebody watching in 2021 and 2022. Hello? What? The 2020 in the title of it. What is it? Not for now? It's, for, it's timeless. So I have to remove that. I have to think of another title. The success series something. 
volume one through five. I did that up until last Sunday. Now I'm in, I'm in another series right now. Praise the Lord. And we're still in January, so I, I'm prophetic, so I'm always ahead of the game. I didn't wait till February. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we need to have more prayer time in the coming days, some prayer time together, with me also included. Praise the Lord, somebody. And, and, and have some gatherings of prayer. By the way, this other thing we were doing, you know, with uh, some other people trying to join together, that's over. I, it's over. It's over. I'm the leader here. That's it. There's no other. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. That's it. It's it. It's done. It's done. That won't happen again. Done. Thank God for the any advice, help along the way, celebration. It's good, but then, you know, people are... Yeah, they do this all the time, so it's okay. But uh, with myself and the drivers in the in the in the in the race car seat, okay, we're gonna ride this thing on the track and have some meetings and talk about and pray together about some things. Some people that also need to be involved in that that are coming into the whole thing, and we need to have some time together to really pray, pray together do some fasting. I, I didn't feel the fasting thing this year so much. I did it some, but I didn't, well, not really. Everybody has this schedule to go on a fast. I go on fast when the Holy Ghost tells me to. And long ones. I did three long ones last year. And uh, really did a lot of good for me. And I also lost about 30 pounds, or, and I'm going to lose another bit too. It's good. It's good for the health. When you fast, it really does something. When you go without food for many days and drink liquid, you can drink a lot of liquid. You know, I don't even mind having a cappuccino. I think I'm addicted to it. That would be a real fast. God says, no, oh, please don't ever do that, Lord. I don't even want to say it out of my mouth. Praise the Lord. Please, Lord, don't ever let, <laughs> tell me to do that fast. I'll do anything he wants me to do, but I'm not eating any food, but man, I'm still going to have a cappuccino. Praise the Lord, somebody. All right, if God ever tells me not to have cappuccino, I don't know. I'll, then I'll be in sackcloth and ashes on the ground, and I'll put like a burlap thing around my neck and cry, and boo-hoo, and hi, you know, sit down and shake and cry. I'm fasting. I'm, <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really fasting. I can't have a cappuccino. Lord Jesus, what does the world come to? Hallelujah. How many excited about that? We need to have some prayer time, some fasting time some you know we break some stuff we we invoke some stuff we create some things prophetically and the right people will be there more people are coming into the fold you know how many people write me and say they want to come they want to come they want to connect and i don't know they're from so many different streams and so many different denominations no denominations i mean Praise the Lord. Divinations, demonations. Denom no, excuse me. Denominations. So many cemeteries. I mean seminaries. Praise the Lord. And they're all messed up by this and that and that. And most of them just have problems. They come crying. And then they just want like a, a little injection, you know, from the doctor, Jesus, you know, doctor, prophet, whatever from. I'm not talking about literally, but spiritually, you know to alleviate them from their trouble. But I think some people are really warped in the head. I think they like their trouble too much. Where's the generation that says, okay, God, I'm not just gonna cry it emotionally, but say, I'll do anything it takes to change. Lift your hands if you're one of those people. I am. Anything it takes to change for the better. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my God. OMG, cap, cap, triple caps, OMG. Anything it takes to get better. The love of God will do that. His presence will do that. His presence will do that. So God went before us. A little foundational truth, one more, as I'm just about to wrap this uh, part one here, if it is. Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet lost, while we were still lost, Christ died for us. He went ahead of us. He thought of us first. And now here's something about the, the change factor. Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with, I have been, or I am, crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. In other words, not my own thing. 
But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And closing in this verse, Psalm 136, 26. Give thanks to the Lord, and this version says, give thanks to the God of heaven. Well, that's, he's, he's the God of everything, if you really think about it. Although the scripture talks about the God of this world blinding the minds of people, because Satan got in through, you know, Adam's treachery, uh, tricked by, by the woman, and, but Adam and Eve, that scenario. But God is the God of everything. You know, the Lord, the scripture said in Psalm 24, let's look at that. It says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. So ultimately, it's still all his, even though other things have the ability to. I mean, they've been running around. Thirty days, but it says, give thanks to the God of heaven. Let, let's give thanks to the Lord. Let me just leave it there, Lord of all. His love endures forever. That's another fact, that his love for you will never change. Can you be in his hand and jump out of his hand? If you want to, but his hand is still there to jump back into if you don't go too far. Because the Bible says the Spirit of God will not always strive with man. You know there's a day if he's calling you a certain way and you keep denying him access or keep saying no or keep not doing the right thing, you know, he, he may stop asking after a while, leave you to yourself. That's a very dangerous place to be. But I've never found myself there. I thank God that every day I feel his anointing. Lift your hand. Every single day I feel his presence. Somewhere, somehow in the course of the day. Sometimes it's like extended for hours and hours on end. Sometimes it's here and there. But eh, you know, it depends on where I'm at, what I'm doing. But every single day of my life, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, it is this daily, hourly, 365 days a year, somewhere in there, God is all in the equation. He talks to me. He speaks to me. Tells me things. Absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. He spoke some things to me last night and this morning. I can't, I can't tell now. Things to me. I can't talk about that. Powerful. So powerful. If you say, what was it? I'm not telling you. Get jealous and talk to God yourself. <laughs> say, Lord, please talk to me like you talked to Dr. Thomas. Please, Lord. Like you talked to your prophet. Talk to me too. Come on now. I'm not no chicken over here. I'm not fried chicken and mashed potatoes and plantains. What do you call that, that local Kenya? I'm, I'm not even gonna go there. Irio, I'm not Irio. Mocha what? Mokimo, I'm not Mokimo. I'm not a banana, I'm not insignificant. I'm not some animal. Please Lord, can you talk to me too? He'll answer that. But his love endures forever. Let's lift our hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and play something on that thing if you're going to do it. Soft worship atmosphere. You, Lord, are compassionate and gracious, abounding in love and faithfulness to us. Oh, my. I love the scripture, Zephaniah 317 also. Okay, that was Psalm 8615. But I also love Zephaniah 317. He takes the light in me and his love is not there to rebuke me. No, it's to even rejoice over me with singing. Now, God can correct you. Let me balance it on the other side a little bit. God can correct you when he needs to. Let him do it. Always take correction as a good son. Always take correction as a good daughter. Always, always, always. Don't be offended by it. Ask God for a tough skin. If someone tells you something a certain way, just take the wisdom. You, you ever say something to someone, someone brilliant, like, I'm not just saying, you know, again, to my credit, I'm not praising my, I wouldn't do that. I'm praising the Lord, let other people speak of me. But I mean, let, let's say I say something, and I, I'm very particular on words. 
I thought about what I was going to say. I said it exactly right. Just do that. You don't have to ask, is that how it is, or is that right? Or do I do that? Yes. You know, already said it. I was right the first time. Just do exactly that. We need to have that kind of guidance from God and from leadership, you know, strong, brilliant leadership. Just be able to take it. Just pray, let's pray right now for the grace of God that where we need to have information imparted to us, where we need to be steered in the right direction, God will do it. And I pray also that he'll, he'll keep evil from us, and protect us from the evil we don't know about. And when the evil shows up in a certain way and it looked okay at first, but it wasn't, we, we, we know how to just allow God to, you know, show us and short circuit the thing and let it not be a long thing. The worst thing you want is to have a bad thing prolonged in your life. Lift your hand and say, Lord, we're canceling that right now. You, you have to not let anything bad be prolonged. Nothing bad can be prolonged in your life. It cannot. Anything bad let it be like an instantaneous thing. Okay, it was bad. Sorry it was, but let it not last. And again, as I started, I'm closing. Go by your feelings. Not that we live by our feelings. We live by our faith. But don't try to take like and say it's faith for me to believe the best about something that's not good or someone that is also not acting okay. Take the proper steps to cancel that out and get on with your life. I'm telling you the peace, the joy, are you blessed? The anointing, the favor, the presence of God. This is where it's at. This is what causes everything good to happen for us. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost as we're wrapping this right now. Father, I thank you for our, our blessed audience also out there in the world, wherever you're watching me right now. Thank you for partnering with us, your tithe, your offering, your seed, your first fruits, your alms for the world missions. You can help by several entities that are beyond the screen, those watching on video uh, uh, after this has been uh, uh, edited, you know, made for production rather, you, you, you'll see the information on the screen, the Cash App, the PayPal, the website, thomasmanton.com. There are facilities there for you to become also a recurring partner, a monthly partner, uh, a continuous uh, donor and, and, and connected. You're sowing seed into this fertile soil of anointing and God's gonna to begin to um, increase you. When you're tithing, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing there's not room enough to receive it and, and I will rebuke the attacker, the devourer from you. And he can't mess your stuff up and he can't steal from you and he can't hurt you. It's a protection thing. It's like kingdom insurance, you know? It's like, kingdom. It's like insurance. It's not that they pay you after the event either. You got to fight with them to pay for something that happened. He prevents it from happening to begin with. So it's not really insurance, it's assurance. Hello? Some people make companies, they call it the assurance society. That's also man's tricky ways of talking. But God is the ultimate assurer. His, his love and covenant is unfailing. And when we're flowing and tithing and offerings and seed and you know, doing good things for the world and living for him and experiencing and receiving his blessing and his touch. Wow. Everything good begins to happen. So let's be vigilant and be praying also that only the right people, only the right situations will stand in our life. That's it. Anything that's wrong for us, it goes in Jesus' name. Anything, Lord, that you've not ordained, anyone that you've not ordained, any situation you've not ordained, it goes out of our world, out of our personal world. It's gone. Let it go. And only what the good things that you've done, let it be done. Let, 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 it, let it be there with us. And also, Lord, I pray for blessings in business breakthroughs in finance coming, the closings of the deals, the money's coming, the, uh, 
the blessings of the Lord that make rich upon all of us, that the manifestations of payments, closing of deals, payments, absolutely done, not in the realm of being done, but done and paid in Jesus' name, we call ourselves. And I call every person that has any business entity, any kind of deal, any kind of transaction going on, if any source of money that's supposed to be for them, I command it to come through this week in Jesus' name, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. The money that's due to you and owed to you, to be paid to you, it's coming forth in Jesus' name. His love is unfailing, his covenant is unbreakable, and his blessing makes us rich and adds no sorrow. I'm Thomas Manton IV, I'm praying you the words of our great predecessor, the great prophet Isaiah, when he said in 48, 17, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way that you should go. I'll teach you to profit. I'll make you the head and not the tail. Above all, and not beneath Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13 said. Deuteronomy 8 says, when you listen to the voice of the Lord and do what he says, he'll cause you to be blessed in so many ways. And even the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. In Proverbs 13, 22, the blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. Proverbs 10, 22, Deuteronomy 8, 18. Let's look at that on the screen. I am the Lord your God who gives you power to get wealth. And the word power there is the same word dunamis, the Holy Ghost, like he said in Acts 1, 8. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and be my, you'll be my witnesses. Same word there, power, is the same word in Deuteronomy 8, 18. Power to create and generate and receive wealth to make, manage, and multiply. God said this is the season of success, the year of success, the time of success to be our portion and our lifestyle and experience. I pray it happens for you in Jesus' name, my friend. But, but, but listen, back to the premise from the love of God because he loves you and he loves me. And he wants to do it all for us in Jesus' name. Love you much, waiting to hear from you. Also, there's a thing in Kenya called M-Pesa. The number is 0792-320-780. You in Kenya can do that. And uh, the other information will be on the screen. Someone could put it all in the comments for me on this. And also on the screen on the video that people can have our information to where to tithe, where to sow, where to give, where to sow, where to support, where to sow a seed for your business life. I met, I met some people yesterday that knew me from years ago. We ran into them somewhere. So I hadn't seen him in years. And, uh, and I began to say about our, our target audience. Uh, God has assigned me also to business people and to government leadership. Government, to infiltrate the government, to get the touch of God upon them. And, uh, and, and for the business community, for entrepreneurs to be blessed. I said, you're, you're, you've, met, you, you've met the right guy again. This is the source, the mantle on us for financial increase and prosperity. It's here. And, and I know that uh, God's going to begin to do some of these wonders for you. Remember he said, I'll give you treasure, and by this you'll know that I'm the Lord your God. It's a sign and a wonder that he gives according to Isaiah 45. I was talking about that last Sunday. So receive that right now in Jesus' name, and never forget, let this thing about the love of God, med meditate on it, resonate in it. His unfailing love, his unbreakable covenant. He's with us, he's for us. And we need to have more time in his presence. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. Love you much. Talk to you again real soon.